Hey guys, it's Dave Q with Flowtrend Process Care. Today I'm joined by Steve Stovall, one of our account managers on the West Coast. Thanks for joining me, Steve. Sure, Dave. Good to, good to talk with you. Yeah, you as well. So we just wanted to have a quick uh, discussion here. And um, obviously, in the wake of the COVID pandemic, there's been a lot of changes to the food and beverage processing industry. And, you know, as an account manager calling on a lot of these processing plants, we kind of want to get your take on, on some of the challenges these, um, the plants are, are currently facing, you know, dealing with this. Sure. So yeah. what types of changes are you seeing at the plants in terms of, you know, safety required personal protective equipment um, and even allowing outside vendors into the facility? Yeah, I've reached out to a lot of the different plants uh, that I deal with. And, and what I'm seeing a lot of is, frankly, the, the plants are, are being very cautious about letting people in. Uh, it really has to be a critical application or a critical uh, need versus just a, a, a standard visit. So uh, a lot of the plants uh, are not allowing visitation at all. Some are limited. Uh, it really depends on, on what their needs are. They, they've, they're less inclined to uh, have just a, your, your typical salesman visit unless they right. have a, a required uh, application. So are you getting a lot of calls from your customers still who are reaching out in terms of spare parts and they just, you know, contacting over the phone and video chat or? Yeah, a lot of that. And, and, and frankly, it, it could be that this is something that changes the way business is done in our industry. Right. Uh, you know, it, it went from when, when I started 30 years ago, there was the traditional, what they call the milk route and a salesman would just get in his car and, and drive to each plant. And, uh, they would through the, through the course of a week, they would just have a little check, you know, maybe a, a clipboard right. and the, the maintenance guys would, would put in their requests of parts they needed every week. This guy would pick it up and, and deliver, you know, deliver, pick up a PO from the purchasing group and then. Uh, off you go to the next stop. But uh, that's, uh, I, I think this, the, the COVID situation might change that in that uh, purchasing doesn't necessarily need a, a, a visit from someone unless they have an application. Someone technical like you would go in, uh, they, they need you there because you, you, you provide expertise they don't have. Right. If, that's one of those critical, critical scenarios you reference. Correct. Yeah. And, and the, I, I think that's, that's maybe the direction of the industry where they're going to do, you're going to see less of that milk route type salesman and more of the technical expertise right. uh, coming into the plants. So with all these tighter guidelines, how are, how are your customers approaching, you know, more structured preventive maintenance, not so much emergency breakdowns, but um, you know, their regular PM schedule, how is that being dealt with? Yeah, the what we're seeing is, and and um, even even trending with with flow trend generally is, uh, a lot of the plans are running to fail versus a planned maintenance. You know, they're, right. they're just they're just, and if it's a non critical application, especially uh, if a valve is leaking a little bit, they're not going to necessarily uh, do a planned maintenance on those, uh, which bodes well, I think, in the future for for our process group because they're their attention is, is diverted more to the filler, toward the separator, some of those, you know, critical parts sure. within the plant. Sure. So a lot, yeah, but, but we're seeing basically the same in, influx of uh, orders, but the orders are tend to be smaller, uh, more, more, and more overnight rush type, type things. Right. So, you know, that's interesting as well. Um, you know, we've been reading a lot of news articles on, on some of the big customers we have, big um, you know name brand products. So, have you noticed um, a trend with certain industries being more negatively affected by COVID, but others actually seeing spikes in their production or, or their um, you know their profits? Yeah, uh, we've seen food processors uh, like soup, uh, extended shelf life, ESL stuff. Right. Though that business is going really well. Beverages going really well. Dairy adversely affected uh, meat right. processing. You know, we've all read the stories about that. that that's just the way they do businesses. People are bunched in pretty close to one another and they've, they've had some spikes hit. Um, so those are, those are things that, that we've seen. Uh, and, and more recently, just, just recently within the, within the recent future with respect to dairy, uh, Walmart and, 
yep, they're, they're going to process their own milk. They're building a plant in, in Kentucky. And their decision was uh, the, the processor, not, not to be named them, uh, they were using old equipment and they felt like they weren't getting the shelf life that they, they could get. Right. Uh, so they were building the state of the art, building the state of the art uh, uh, plant. Uh, and they're going to, so they're going to process their own milk. The downside to the general, generally speaking to the, to the uh, dairy industry is uh, they're going to, they're going to sell their dairy products at a really reduced price mm-hmm. as a loss leader to get people to come into the store. Sure. So that's going to, that's going to be adversely affect dairy that, that combined with uh, the competition from uh, your oat milk and your al- uh, almond milk products. And then, um, uh, Cereal consumption is way down. So generally speaking, dairy's dairy's in a tough spot. So if looking down the road, I I value. Or I, I think that Flowtrend maybe would t- would do well to target those beverage plants, right? You know, specifically like the syrup plants, uh, like the, the the one in Ontario, California, is a Coke plant that has uh, a lot of Tuchanagan valves, big ones. Those right. are those are areas I think for especially for process care, that'd be a great place to hunt for us. I think in the future. Yeah, sure. No, and that makes sense. I mean, we, we've experienced that with, um, you know, a, a Pepsi plant that we did work at where right at the start of the pandemic, they were just running water nonstop, yeah. um, just bottled water. And, um, you know, I've seen a lot of reports of some of these big name brands where they're, they're kind of cutting back on the newer, you know, the kind of fad type products and really focusing on their core products because it's that shelf stable, non-perishable goods that have really seen seen a boom that everyone's running out, picking up the canned goods, the peanut butter. And obviously, like you mentioned, dairy, no one's stocking up on dairy because you can't hold on to it. But it's kind of like that, you know, the apocalypse yeah. care kit stuff is yeah, really yeah. doing well. And, uh, you know, you mentioned some of these alternative dairy products as well. And that brings up another uh, another point. I'm wondering if you're seeing any other interesting product changes or developments from your customers um, outside of their typical scope of, of products they supply. Well, that, you know, you speak of that, that that's exactly what I'm seeing is uh, Chobani. Uh, they make yogurt, but they've just built an expansion in Idaho that does strictly uh, oat milk. So right. they see, they see a lot of future in that. And, and, you know, they, 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 uh, they've done a lot of research on that. So, uh, I, yeah, and, that, and that's an ESL product. So, uh, you know, it's an aseptic application. Uh, right. So, yeah, that's kind of the direction I'm seeing. A, a lot of my distribution is developing. I would say the integrators are developing their own um, aseptic t- uh, group. Here in the States, aseptic products or ESL products, they weren't necessarily that popular. It's more prevalent in, in South America and Europe. Mm-hmm. But we're starting to see more of that here. And several of my distributors have, have kind of be- developed their own specialized systems for aseptic applications. So more and more of that, I think. No, and yeah, I definitely agree. You know, ESL, extended shelf life. I've, we've been hearing about that for years, but certainly yep. the, the current state of things is just going to kind of, you know, quicken how, how much everyone switches over to those types of products. And I think people are going to start to, I myself have switched to, you know, buy more almond milk. It's always in the house and you can pick it up off the shelf and throw it in your, your basement and it could sit there for a significant period of time. And it's obviously a substitute for dairy. So, uh, it is, it is interesting. Um, and I'm also curious, Obviously, with the landscape, what types of solutions you're hearing from your customers, what types of solutions they'd like to see vendors providing, what types of alternative uh, options we can give them where they are really limiting um, vendors from coming coming into the plant? Yeah, I think, I think it's the expertise uh, that they don't have, uh, that they, uh, you know, ways to, ways to make their plants more efficient. Uh, we, we've, we, uh, got news that it looks like we're going to get the, the uh, craft job in Mason city, the main, the service job. It was the, the, uh, great. that was presented to them. Now it's going to be a capital project. So it's going to go in January, but those are the kind of things I think that plants as things loosen up, they're going to realize that they've let their plants run kind of on a shoestring. Right. And I, so then it's going to be, it's going to be a situation where they, they really have to, to address some of the issues that they've kind of let, let drift right. for a while. So I think that's, that's the direction that, that they're going to go. Uh, just 
they just simply can't keep up with they this uh run to fail scenario is not sustainable no it's not and it, it's unfortunately it is common i mean I, I do understand it with with a lot of these plants that you have so much money invested into into this technology and it's so easy especially with products like valves to just let it go until it yep. fails but yep. once it does fail and if it's on a if it's on a homogenizer or a separator and you're in a, a real real mess at that point and especially nowadays where you can't have these food plants shutting down people are now depending upon it you see how tough it is to get access to some of this stuff and and god forbid you know someone in the plant ends up being sick or getting multiple people sick, it's even more critical that they're staying on top of regular, a regular maintenance schedule and have, you know, uh, a partner who has that expertise to help to, to avoid these, um, these emergency breakdowns. Yeah. And, 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 and with respect specifically to, to um, uh, mixed proof valve manifolds, what I explained to uh, Mason city was if you've got a manifold of 20 valves and you need, that's going to be serviced. We're going to do a, a service overnight, but we need this thing to run in the morning because we have contracts we need to fill. Right. The, you can't just, you can't just get through 19 valves. That manifold right. acts as, as, uh, uh, as a unit. So if we work all night on a 20 valve manifold and we only get 19 finished, we may as well have only done one because right you know, that that manifold can't function unless all of them are, are complete. Uh, so if you've got a short, you're, you know, you've got a, a, a reduced uh, service team, they can't necessarily get that job done. There's a lot of pressure involved. I don't have to tell you that. And yeah. so that's where I think we're going we're gonna to shine in those scenarios. Good. Well, thanks so much, Steve. I think that's um, a lot of really good information and feedback, and uh, we appreciate your time. My pleasure. Good talking with you. You as well.